going on. Some teams have experimented with the tube, but a lot of teams just kind of do these gathers, especially on pistols. And so, no shocker here to see this commitment. We see uh, he, Quinn was trying to put some pressure at tube, but he's been caught already. And you, you don't get a whole lot out of that with the paranoia as well. That turret getting a handful of value, although the kills traded right back almost immediately. And now it's a 4v2 Gen G looking to come out on top. Drone, the first to find a kill, now needs to find a couple of more. He's still waiting on that Sova to creep on up. Low HP on one. If they could find that one up into dash. He's able to find him from downtown, but now finds himself in a one back as his pseudo operator. Yeah, didn't put some initial pressure on Aesop, but now they've pretty much fully committed to long B control. And I have to say, TSN's made the proper rotations. So they're getting a couple of picks, but Gen.G are trading it right back now. They had their Cypher lurking through two. Drone is going to cut it off, though. And now it's going to put us into kind of uh, murky waters, I would say. It's now a two-on-two slight. Not taking yet. Boombot detects a player. Ooh, and damage to come through. Missed out on the Sova, but tagged the Omen in the back. So lower HP here for Gen.G as they look to get that spike down. Paint shells. Still available. They're going to go out over the top. Unfortunately, not going to find the kill now. Gen G playing with that clock as the spike has been planted. TSM looking to turn it around and make me eat my words. Wardell, unfortunately, not finding an upgrade there. Is that recon dart? Not going to find too much. They know they're in the area. Now they look to peek. Nobody has faked the spike just yet. Wardell actually going to find the headshot on him. kill finds another onto Gimon and TSM. They grab themselves around. Indeed they do. Again, they went ahead and went for the force up, got some shares, got a couple of stingers in. This one winning here qualifies you for that close for challengers too. Is Sean going to kick things off once more this time? Not necessarily needing the uh, the larger rifle. Able to take down Wardell and look to go right back to town. He also has that showstopper available. Yep. Low on HP though. I'm not too sure if we'll see that one, but another B take in the works. And mm -hmm. I mean, not a whole lot from TSM back on the eco. Yeah, they don't really have a whole lot to work with here. They tried to make a couple of plays through these smokes, but Gen G has been disciplined and kept an eye on them and not really allowed a snake to sneak through the grass in those regards. As we do see Sean get picked up, he was on that middle alert, so that does open up a couple of more routes for TSM to try to retake through, but the kills from Gen G have responded in kind and left Drone all by his lonesome. He still has his full kit. But now the element of surprise is well and truly. Sean and company able to go ahead and pick up there on Drone. They're just pinched in the corner here. Hey, he's able to fight back a bit with the Sheriff. A couple of nice kills, but again, Jinji are so quick to respond in these trading exchanges and make sure that they are never really a step behind, even when, you know, they meet a bit of resistance. And so now it's all on Wardell with the Blades to see if he can't pull off something miraculous. This would be miraculous, the best way to describe it. As he spots one out back towards yellow. No, maybe one on the flank. He's able to pick that one up on him on the Ooh. right. Click goes wide, though, and Sean sits him. And to try to hammer their way in their arm. Four players in position, though, here for TSM. Ooh, really nice recon. Bull got some information as they started to storm onto the site. First kill going to come through, but traded right back. Once more, it is pistols for TSM. Pistols and a Hunter's Fury as Cutler's actually able to grab one. Now we find ourselves in a 2v2 with the lockdown on the site and all the upgrades available. Quinn so far off the site. The spike not even necessarily planted for him. This is going to be miracles coming out from Gwyn here. He's able to find the first, pops the knives to look to find the second. And in a 1v1, Gwyn taking on Clutchler here. Can he live up to the name? Gwyn going to go up top. The spray comes through. The right click going to miss. And Cutler finds three to get TSM back on the board. Yeah, it was kind of great just to have Wardell as that early detection system playing that out that round to make sure there was no chance. They pick that up as they go right back to the nice. two ways. But Wardell is there to sit it down. Now, another close. And he's looking to re-peak. He's not going to find the angle. Sean sits him down once more. That is Sean's specialty. Killing players with the op. Having a Vandal in his hands. But TSM not done just yet. Neither is Sean. Neither is Mikhail. The kills go back and forth. But Cutler, unfortunately, finds himself again. Possibly saving here in this round. Yeah, I mean, I have to say that that whole round, nobody can rotate back on through. Sean now going to be in close quarters combat here. Vandal versus Spectre. He's not too privy of the information either. As the smokes goes out, he is locked down on this site. <laughs> this is one of those awkward moments for sure. It's just like that mystery Valentine situation where you're trying to figure out who's on the other side. And while well, Hayes eventually slides and he's able to find Sean, sure. 
And TSM's Wardell pitches in as well, but Genji are still holding on here, but only for just a moment as Wardell has now made things interesting. It's now a two versus two. He pops the ult. The other two defenders having to play the spike from well behind. Hunter's free, though, from Mikhail. Could indeed be what the doctor ordered as Kusa is able to play off of it for another pick. And now it's all on Wardell. He's found one, but now he's been found out and time has ticked too far. He will have to bow out and he's not even oh. able to escape with the saved operator. So Jin G. The kills at the end of the round. I think it was on 13 seconds left as he picks up the spike. And Wardell actually picks up a couple, but Huynh. He is back with a vengeance. He <laughs> takes his operator back in hand, has the blades out. Oh, no. Unfortunately, will be sat down. So an operator down up in kitchen. He's had a One of these teams rewards on the way out. And Kusta still on the flank. Still able to find the kills. I thought Cutler knew he was there, but unfortunately, he did not. The odds have been evened. The Broza Ooh. teleports over towards B. Unfortunately, that spike headed over towards the safe site. Yeah, indeed, he guessed a little bit wrong with that all. Can't blame him, though. He wanted to try to make sure he can position to help in case it was. But Hayes, he doesn't need any help, does he, Tanner? He's able to pop off a couple of big Vandal headshots on his own. Kusta trying to sneak in and behind, and he's been busted by the turret. No surprise now. He does win the heads-up duel, though, and he has a 1v2, but the spike is still not in his grasp and drone. He's not going to get a whole lot of anything. It does push him back momentarily. So kind of acting as a pseudo lockdown. Yeah. To allow Mikhail to get that spike on down. The shock darts go out and he's actually able to escape from those too. So now we get ourselves a real lockdown. More importantly, a 5v5 retake. And there isn't a whole lot to answer that one. Oh no, the paint shells actually downed the lockdown in Gen G. Megamind brain here. Oh, nice kill from Drone, though, to open things up. Kimon trades it back, Stinger in hand, and he just got to nerf that weapon as Mikhail finds another with the Vandal. Now the rifle starting to come online for both teams. Wardell able to find it with the Operator, but now it's a 1v2. He doesn't have a whole lot of time. He tries to fake the defuse, but Huynh will sit him. And now we get to see what they mount as far as an attack goes, and, and you know, only having two competitive games on file... We've seen how a lot of teams play this map if you're not comfortable. Unfortunately, the Ghost comes out on top here over the Sheriff for Wardell. As he will fall down, Sean going to find another in the defense. Looking to be locked down D. As the dart just getting so much value. Cutler's able to trade it back, but again, it just feels like it's starting to fall apart. As I say it, Hayes able to find himself on the board, but Huynh picks up two, and it's the gear early in this one. As Sabrosa trying to grab some tube control, taking a page out of the Gen G book, but just not a whole lot to be had as that spike creeps up towards A. Trapwire should slow him down. Sabrosa going to fall to the stinger of Kusta once more, and Gen G try and find another round, but... It's, it doesn't seem to take a whole lot for that to do just that. They're trying to make it flawless, and Kusta is hungry for more kills, but so is Drone. Sean will finally close things out, take things up eight in a row to grab that lead, and nine for the win. But one round at a time as they storm onto the B side. The spike swinging kind of wide here. Sabrosa looks to spray through, make sure nobody's on the other side of the box, making sure nobody's playing that drone angle. Drone from downtown picks up two, though. GMD and Kusta are gone. That is the top frag down. That is the smokes and the paranoia down. Oh. As Gen G are down to their last member here. Drone going huge in this one off the back end of that pick from Hayes and Huynh in a 1v5. He popped the, popped the knife. You might as well go for it. This yeah. is going to be uh, a crazy effort if he gets this one done. I'm not feeling it. I'm going to be real with you. That's a nice pick there onto Wardell, but now the jig should well and truly be up. They know exactly where he is. As long as they play a discipline, they should have a problem, but Huynh... Through the cloud, they're able to find Cutler. The, I think the problem is, is the clock. That's going to be his worst enemy here. He's able to find a couple of kills and, and make things interesting. Okay, maybe not a great spot as when Making sure to do his due diligence and check all of the angles, but a very slow start here from TSM. Mikhail will have drone out middle, though, and get some information over there. So it allows Jinji to kind of reinforce their A defense and even allow their Sova to start making an early rotation. They already have three players on the A site, in fact. So... I mean, they, they have a pretty good look. They still have the can set up at long B, so they, they know that that's covered. They know that TSM are not doubling back. So Jinji are just absolutely dominating the information game right now. It's allowing them to really take comfortable angles here on the site. And comfortable angles, comfortable shots from Huynh as he finds a third one here, looking to find a couple more. Make it four as he tries to dash. So 
A little bit of craftiness there from TSM to get a little bit of a comeback going. They've won three of the last four rounds, and while they haven't really threatened Jinji just yet, you give them a couple of more, and all of a sudden, Jinji need to be a bit concerned. Yeah, Huynh is, he's a bit done with giving up these rounds, though, as he goes aggressive <laughs> with the knives. GMD gonna mow him down underneath Tube, now looking for another. The mid play makes everything fall apart here for TSM. Cutler trades it back, but it is an uphill battle with Demon on the flank, looking to find some more. The up shot goes wide, oh and who better than GMD to clip and map two? Already starting hot here. The dash on the side through the Molly Hayes gonna go down, but this A site is not free. Drone finds one through mid, and Sabroza picks one up in tree. Now a couple of players here. Trying to stop this storm onto the site, and they're One able to do it momentarily. Remaining. Sabrosa finds another now. Kusta, the man, the myth, the legend, the man of the hour that we were just talking about, does. Needs to go huge in a 1v3. He's off to a great start. Yeah, so far, so good. Kusta trying to battle his way out of this, though. Puts the turret down to push a player back off catwalk, and he still has the option to kind of backstab through heaven. The problem is his spike is well out of his possession. He does have a little bit of time on his side, and he spotted another player over towards main, so at least he knows where both players are. But knowing is half the battle, especially whenever you're behind a man count. He's taking an aggressive stance, though, trying to take the fight on this team, especially on that Reyna. GMD, though, right onto the site. He's got win right next to him, but the flashes might not be enough. It's just falling apart for TSM. The four spies are coming up huge here in this series. Yeah, just Genji wasting no time. Again, playing at a much faster pace than traditional for the Genji lineup. Just busting in through middle and B main. And now they have a four on three post plant here. They're trying to stall out the ramp with the jet smokes. Gusta trying to play a bit of a crossfire with his teammate from double stack. But Sub Rosa and Warnell actually able to break through a little bit here. They're paving the way. And it's left Mikhail all alone here in the back of the site with the stinger. He's able to slide out those spots of Diffuser, able to get some damage in, not able to finish the job just yet though, now they're sticking it, but he's able to punch in there, Wardell trades back in the spike, oh it actually wasn't halfway, so I don't know that he'll get this, it's yeah, gonna be close, No, oh. got that corner, but a nice little flash push from Drone is going to put that to a halt. Standing ahead. Maybe finding some more. No, it's the Vandal in the hands of Quinn to find the first, he dashes away, which gives a bit of room. Or Cutler to sneak on away, but again, that arsenal favors Gen G for this round as it's just pistols. One to one across the board and kills. And a blade storm available for when he's also on low HP. And Sean gonna cut down the numbers a bit more. Sabroza trying to go back to his killing ways, unfortunately, not able to do it. And Gen G, it's scrappy, it's not the cleanest, left. but they but are working to pick up this round. Yes, it's, it's all Sean. It, it I mean, it's working. It's just Sean being really. I well, like how Sub Rosa. I like how Sub Rosa pushed back the site early. Like they didn't commit to a lobby. They're able to get back into the site as Genji were trying to abuse a gap that could have been there at Catwalk. But you see, TSM were able to make sure it was covered up. Sean, though, a great Ooh. dismiss, able to find Sub Rosa underneath Heaven, and now he is isolated <laughs> from any type of support. They'll swing on him with all three players. They're not letting him get anything. Drone with the run it back, trying to be the hero here. He's usually effective with these. He's trying, but he's been caught. Yeah, and a, a pseudo 3v3, now a 2v3, lower HP on the Phoenix, especially with that run at back being sent on back, loses all of his armor, now on 62 health, as that recon bolt might spot him out, it does just that, the spray through the wall. Cutler, days alive for now, in, in a, not in a great spot, he finally gets wow. flanked, who better than Kusta to do it, to find that kill, Gen. Objectively speaking, no matter how much of a Genji fan you might be, TSM usually have their number. But Genji, they've been impressive here, but they line up for Haze. He only is good for one, but he slows him down and sets up Sub Rosa, who's now going to stall them even more with the flashes. And Sub Rosa, again, on a scent here with that Sky, you can just count on this guy. GMD going to trade it back. GMD good for three, but Wardell with the knives. We saw him popped earlier in the round, and they come up huge. Now Kusta, once more, just like we saw earlier in this game, finds himself. In a clutch situation, Vandal versus Stinger. Jet's gonna swing wide, find the kill, and the defuse as TSM tie things up. And now the back and <laughs> forth, it, it feels, you know, it's could it, be anti climax The final nail in the coffin in that round. We're gonna see a big paranoia push attempt here from Gen G. Quinn leading the charge with the daggers, and he's found the entry. Picks up one, tries to spray him down, finds the upgrade, but Hayes is good to trade it back. GMD, though, gonna back up his teammate. 
Now open it up the A side of TSM. Once more, Whittle down oh! to three, but Wardell gonna even the odds. He dashes away, and unfortunately, that run it back does not get a whole lot. Maybe bought some space for the op shot. As that spike looks to get planted here. Another one through the wall. Wardell picks it up, and Drone goes good for another. Now, Mikhail. And 1v3, they all drop down, and this looks very similar, but it's TSM on the delivering end of that three-man oh peak. Oh my, I thought that attack was actually pretty good from Jin G to assert themselves. As money is starting to run low on Jin G. They're gonna try to paranoia push yet again through B lobby this time. It's win to kick things off once more. There's the two for one. This time, Sean not gonna find an upgrade. Ops to keep in that stinger. But TSM, again, find themselves with only three remaining. And Sean looks to go aggressive. The spike has since been planted. Genji look to battle back here. Now in that post plant, the Seekers go through, the flashes go out, and there's just a whole lot you have to worry about. The Hunter Shuri being one of these tools for Genji. They have in their toolbox, the Leer goes through, the spray comes down, and TSM, they're going to have to pull the trigger here soon. Yeah, I mean, I like how they used the Hunter Shooter to basically shut down TSM trying to play off the back of those Seekers to start the retake. But Hayes creeping in from B Lobby is going to open up an additional route that Genji have to worry about here. Sean tucks himself into market, but his teammates are falling apart now. It's all on him in the one versus three. He has found Hayes, but they're defusing the spike as he's having to fend off against Sabrosa. He's not probably going to get here in time, or does he? He indeed Ooh. takes out Troll. What a play. Taking him on board. Ooh, nice overall strike. Should find some damage. No, gonna find the kill because of the rifle damage, but aggressive in response is win. Unfortunately, gonna pay for it as Sabrosa picks up another. Ace goes good for a two. Sean, gonna pick up a couple for himself. Now in a 3v2, he's got the Empress available. No, he does not. Wardell will dethrone the Empress before it can be popped. And Mikhail finds himself this time, not a 1v3 underneath heaven. 1v2 looking to take down the op also has to retrieve the spike he pushes on in the knives come out Wardell looking to take the fight oh, no. soon, but it's Mikhail coming what? out just really individually nice plays for some of their big players and again Wardell being a part of that in this round with drone that one two combo comes through for some big entries on the pistol and they should be finding their eighth round here and it just happens so quickly here. Now, a, a reminder that this is TSM's map pick. And when yes. you pick the map, you give the opposition the choice at the sides. It was Gen G who selected attack first. Only putting up five might be a pretty scary spot to be at the half now that they're on the defensive end. Low HP on two members, though, may, could make this 4v2 a 2v2. But I think with TSM on attack, we probably see them carry that momentum deeper mm -hmm. into this game and close it out. Yeah, again, they're very dangerous on both sides of this map. So... <laughs> right I mean. in the smoke. Oh, <laughs> they come firing on out. Wardell picks up three on the way out. And that judge getting a multi-frag inside that position as they had a little bit of a bait and switch set up at tree. So uh, it didn't go the way that they planned. And so that means that TSM with their efficient trading, like you said, have a favorable 3v3 post plan here at a site. We are trying to see if Genji want to commit here. They still are kind of just waiting for that smoke to fade out at the doorway. And that will prompt them to go ahead and start keying in on this push. The smoke's to delay. One gets spotted up towards heaven. Kusa with the bulldog takes a bite out of Wardell. Almost takes a bite out of color, but it's Sean to trade it back. And Sean goes good for two. The arsenal advantage was in favor of TSM, but Gen And so someone's hitting 10 rounds here very soon. Very Ooh. soon, and it's looking to be Gen G, but we can't count our chickens dust. We know how these rounds go. One team gets ahead, and then somehow something miraculous happens for the other. As that Lear goes through, and Sabrosa is able to sneak away. This is what you were talking about. The space opened. There's four players over towards B dust. Yeah, I mean, Sabrosa creating so much presence, and somehow he's still alive. He's still getting away. Sean finally silences him, and that does set them up nicely for the retake. Yeah, sure, they gave up a site, but it's calculated because now they have big numbers. Lockdown to worry about here for TSM as that run it back goes through. That might actually put Drone in a pretty bad spot since he's not really able to get away. And yeah, that is him corralled underneath heaven, but Wardell still fragging out here through the smoke. He will go. Sean just gonna push him. The Empress on for Wardell sits him down. Now a 1v3. He upgrades to the rifle, but the spike not planted for him. The easy stick from Gen G. Four members down. Oh, good here. And again, Gen G has never beaten TSM in the best of three. In fact, most of the series they've lost 0-2. So 
this could be huge for them as another opening pick goes quickly who wins way. He's been all over the place, and I love that yeah. about him, to be that dynamic operator, to be taking his different starting locations all the while and having impact. As he gets a third and gets away from the orbital strike on top of it, pulls out the daggers. He doesn't find that one, but he's still done more than enough. Still done more than enough. Puts his team so far ahead. Now one player ahead here in this round. Gen G, if you lose this one, I think Quinn is going to have something to say <laughs> to the rest of the squad. As, as you said, Dodge is out from the orbital strike. And Wardell able to take down the turret. Dodge away from the oh. nano swarm. And he gets sprayed down. And he peeks into two. And Hayes with the operator in hand. He's going to fall. Afraid of anything as he's assumed a position as a defender My in goodness. tiles. And he's going to find that first kill onto Sabrosa. Cutting the numbers down once more. But I like how it's like calculated aggression. They're not overextending with it. They're taking favorable angles and then they just sit and wait and they force TSM to play a hand and they're prepared for it. And they've done it yet again. Drone does get the one entry, sure. And Sean does get caught by Wardell. All of a sudden, this has kind of opened a little bit of a crack in the doorway for TSM. When they pick up on Sean, that opens up middle as an option for them. And now they have even numbers. But look at win. Fearless, but he gets caught by Hayes. And that could be that final thing that TSM needed. But Mikhail, does he go unchecked? I think historically this corner is checked, but not this time around. He's going to spray down two, and it's a 1v1. Wardell on 5 HP. Seconds left. As Gimon looks to find his kill, Wardell creeps oh! up. He finds the flick. He finds... Uh, good decision here as Gimon still trying to play the tree position. He's been caught, though. Hunter's Fury going to come into play. He's trying to dodge it with the shrouded step, but in the midst... TSM are finding entries all across the map. Huen is able to respond with one of his own against Hayes, but TSM are still a step ahead. Sean catches up Rose out in the middle, though, that evens the numbers up, and Huen is still kind of stalling them out at this A site, not really letting them in and to plant comfortably until just now. He sneaks away for a second, but it doesn't matter. He's still able to finish what he started on Drone. And TSM on the back foot again. It's going to take a heroic effort from Wardell once more. He's got the knives available. He dashes away underneath. He's got two duelists to worry about. And Sean is looking to stick it. The right click come through. The blades still available. Now the op in hand. The op academy. Sean defusing. Stops halfway. The shot comes through. And Wardell is... As they're just having Hayes kind of alert this position. He's able to actually pick up on Huynh. That's going to further sell that this is an A play. But as I say that, Jinji are not budging off this B defense. They still have their kill joint omen in place. They do, and the turret gonna get that value. The Nano Swarm gets so much as well, and Sean with the rifle in hand is able to pick one up on the back end of two from GMD and TSM. Wow. They try to hit him with the old bait and switch. They try to hit him with the look over here while we head over here, and it just did not work, Gen G. It just wow. holds stout and it, a near flawless round here. Cutler has to find four kills. Should he wants to pick up this round or Gen G tie it up left. at 11. It's all down to the wire dust. Yeah, it must have been so hard to read that because with Hayes is going to get that kill. And yeah, I know Hayes can sometimes be that lurker with the brimstone on some of this is definitely a time where you want to talk extra and indeed Gen G will buy all that they can, but it's not leaving them with much ice a little bit now because of that as they are just going to be playing. They will alt over to A main, but again, they only spot drone who normally defaults mm -hmm. that position anyway. So it's not really much information gained. And so they're still kind of caught between two minds of where they need to be right now. And Mikhail's all alone. And he's done for. Ooh, and he had his knife out. Yeah, he fails that recon bolt over towards A main, then headed back towards Tree. And he's caught with his pants down. So Bros are going to find that kill. Run it back, use. Not going to find too much, but as a free A take right here. Now a 3v5 for Gen G. Where else we're headed to map three? Win going to find the first. Genji looking to take us here into overtime. Now a 3v4 feels a bit more doable. The shots come down. Wardell through the wall is able to find it. Kusa trades it back underneath heaven. It's safe for Wardell thus far. And TSM close it out. Map 3 on the horizon. They want to go short A and maybe even bail out through the portal if they feel it's necessary. And Kusa unfortunately not going to find that kill. And as they push up towards A, they start to get mowed down. But through the teleporter they go and... Hayes is still hanging out. I don't know if that was uh, an expected play. Oh, no. Dash Mordell, he's able to stay alive with 4 HP. Quinn drops the ball. Denji oh, no. drops. Slows things down. Smokes to slow it down again, but it's back towards B. They go and Sean from downtown with the frenzy. I think uh, I think some players have some problems with this gun too on top of the stinger. So actually, before someone corrects me, there was a 2-0 in the second half of Icebox from Genji when they won that match. Ah. So that was the only other time. We are going to see... 
Genji trying to pry open this B site, and so far, so good. They have a four on two post plant here. So Rose are trying to play through the smoke, but he's been found out before he can really even step through it. But he still finds the kill anyhow, but unfortunately for him, that's all he'll find. Leaving Wardell in what would normally be an impossible 1v3, but with one player low on health and it being Wardell, maybe, just maybe. Full HP on the jet, but post plant all over the place here. One towards elbow, one towards Zuka, one close right. Wardell gonna clear that out. Take the kill as well. And now needs to try and find two more. Running out of time, so he's just gonna have to send it as the shots come through the tube. The smoke goes down. He's able to fake that. Peek on back towards the back side. And I mean, Genji just playing the clock so perfectly. We've seen this multiple times in this series. Now Wardell just has zero time. And Genji get on the board. Yeah, I mean, he, he gave it a look, and he does force all players to reap a mat with a dominant lead. We haven't really seen a whole lot of that. It's been really back and forth through most of these maps. Two, one, two, one. Ah, Quinn's trying to create some space, but Cutler just mows him down. Now, Sean with the Stinger in hand also has the Show Stomper available. And Mikhail picked one up with the Hunter's Fury, so the B-side opened up at a early rotation from TSM. Means they're here and are ready towards the back of the site where Dell's able to dash away, but takes so much damage. One HP on the jet, a dream as well, and TSM mows them down. Yep, that round was close until it wasn't anymore, which is a weird statement to say, but it kind of... He had even seen the smoke come from that direction. It, again, another flounder for Gen G, oh and it my. might mean another round lost here, as that from the shadow is going to be used to try and back up on this B site, Sabroza has since taken his position over towards Elbow. Now a couple members inside the teleporter will find Sean and win the last to fall. TSM, I don't know if it's... I think it was a the, combo so the... that, yeah. Yeah, so now in Sabroza off the back end, able to use that rifle. No utility needed to find those kills. 37 HP. He's got to back away the shrouded step. Oh, no. a bad spot in <laughs> a bad spot indeed as Guimond sprays him down through the smoke. This has been quite some time since we've seen Gen G get the plant in. As I say that, I eat my words because they are delayed a moment longer. Yeah, Hunter's Fury did its job there to buy time for this rotation to set in before the spike could get planted. Gives him a little bit more time to work out the retake. Orbital Strike is going to come onto U-Haul. And Gen G though finding all the kills until Cutler finally responds with the Phantom. Oh, and it's low HP on just about everybody. Cutler closes it out with four kills here, and TSM are not letting up. No, they are not. That round was maybe a little bit closer than TSM would have Raider here over towards short A. Ooh, yeah, pick up an early kill. Huynh gonna fall. Mikhail picks up two, though, and Wardell missed that shot on Kusta, so you still have to be wary of the lurk here. That cam gonna get some information up towards short A, and... Like some rogue are trying to get aggressive. He's gonna get tagged out and GMD with the crossfire sits him down. The tactical pause seems to be all they needed. Get back towards their winning ways, but you still I got mean, Clutchler alive, you still got Wardell. It kind of just played into their hands. I mean, I feel like TSM put themselves on this chain reaction where they tried to go for one play, it didn't work, and it forced them to keep going for plays. And they all got caught by Gen G. But Wardell, again, he's still alive on the server with an operator, so you always have to be concerned that he can maybe pull something off. But this time, he is silenced pretty quickly, and Gen G oh. dropped. Getting a paranoia just a second late. Now the Hunter Sherry comes through it. Finds a tag on the two. Maybe a kill. Nope, not going to be that just yet. As Wardell finds a kill with the knives on the Kusta. Mikhail trades back, but Wardell finds another here. Again, A site not safe on Ascent, not safe on Bind as long as Wardell is still alive. He's going to toss out the Molotov to try and delay the plan for now. And the spike creeping on through Hookah. We're in a 3v3. Ultimates are available for both teams. Ooh. Knives. Left. Available I like for this from Gen G, though. They're not messing with Wardell. They're just moving around him. They're bypassing him as much as they can. And now they get the shock dart to land on him as he was pinned in the site. Gamal catches Drone in U-Haul. And now the round is truly well and done with. Oh, my goodness. Gen G just, again, you would think that those daggers would throw a wrench in things, but they, again, just played so intelligent around where they knew Wardell was pinned, took care of business elsewhere, and then eventually sort him out with the shock dart. And that was a great attack from Genji. And the Hunter Shiri was so far away. It was all the way over towards Hookah, so couldn't even delay that plant in this round. And 
Cutler are going to be forced just to save here. And I think to kind of a stat that's probably pretty untracked as a whole, but Gen G just playing with the, the amount of space they have. We've now coming out from Cutler, Brown or Sabrosa, excuse me, spotted out. And Wardell gets spotted into the smoke. He goes, but they still spray him down. It's a scrappy one towards this A site, but it's TSM staying on top. Now, Quinn trying to turn it around, but 30 seconds left on the clock. It's a close angle. It's a spike fake. Now, Mikhail looking to get that one planted. Both members are coming from this defender area, and Drone has to run it back. This, for me, has been a bit underwhelming, and we'll see what he can get done with it. Unfortunately, nothing. They get the info. But the round could still go either way. TSM looking to have the better half of the first half. And Gen G looking to make things even. A twin with the knives. He just keeps throwing them. And he just keeps killing them. That corner, he's got kind of a bait and switch play. With some Rosa behind him. He's going to go ahead and go for it. Excuse me, that wasn't lucky. That was the Guardian, as you noted. He's able to get the one tap on the win. Sean able to trade it back, though. So that's one thing that's kind of gone their way here on the Genji side. They're going to drone clear pocket and U-Haul as well. So that's going to give them a way to start getting in. Gamal will use that drone to actually alt inside of U-Haul. And now Sean can close this with the showstopper and ensure that side is fully under their control. 30 seconds left. Yeah, and just like we noted in the first one, right? Not finding too much, but getting space on that side. That mini lockdown in that showstopper. Sure, you can throw out the memes as Hayes throws out the damage with the Bulldog. Mikhail is able to trade it back. Sean goes good for another. And now it's down in a 1v1. Again, TSM fighting for a 7-5 and five half. Gen G looking to tie things up off their tactical pause. And Sabros is working against the clock. Recon Bull is available. But the dark cover should be able to stop that one. The shots are going to go wide. And Mikhail picks up his second on the game. Game three, low. We see identical as far as score lines go in the back and forth that has ensued. Here, they were trying to spray him down. No drone will find the kill. And Hayes to pick another. Able to stop. Being moment. One kill for himself. But a player down as the smokes go out. And that spike looking to rotate. Kusta still in the area towards A and has a trap wire that he can look to play with. Made their way through the showers and should be able to play here. Say, oh, that's big. That's gonna free up Gamon to make a rotation here, as we're seeing. All right, we are gonna go ahead and see Jinji trying to see if they can retake with their final player, Gamon here. One v two. Oh, gets the dink there onto Wardell, but the dash allows him to escape. Gimon puts a smoke on the spike to try to draw attention as he slips in from behind. He's wheeling and dealing himself into a potential victory here, but TSM still had the edge with the spike planted. And the numbers on their side, the A site, to plant this spike. And now Gen G must try to go for the retake. Now they're going to have a little bit of firepower they collect to make it work, but mm -hmm. they still are low on health on a couple of players. And again, most of them are still working with pistols. I think they were only able to pick up one after finding okay. that kill. Uh, in mid, as you can see, that X there. I don't know if they were able to push up and grab that. So, one weapon to the good. Shorty's friendly. The spray comes through. We're able to, Wardell's able to get one, but Kusta trades it back. Gen G still ahead here. This is a tall order, though. Staring down the barrel of the Vandal as Drone finds one. Sean, one of the members to pick up the weapon. Now it's low HP. Recon Bolt goes out. Cutler has two shock darts to work with. And unfortunately, time. Kusta doesn't have a whole lot of time to work with. As that kill comes through and TSM will grab another, starting to grow the lead. And he's going to have to look to link up as he heads back towards mid. Everybody rotating on over. And how interesting. After we've seen an explosive game here on Bind, we now find ourselves in a 5v5 retake. Or TSM on the back foot as far as the arsenal goes. Sabrosa trying to spray through. Wardell finds the first. Going to go wide on the next with the right click. But TSM goes good for three. Gen G trying to battle it back, but they're a man down. They fake the defuse. Hayes playing up inside. Wardell actually on the flank here, and they're able to close it out. Wardell, so 50 seconds left on the clock, and they can really work things out however they choose. And as long as they don't have a huge mishap, they should be finding a 10th round. They've done the hard part. Prepare for hellfire. 
Orbital Strike goes out, clearing that one out, and Mikhail and Gimon get on the board here, and even the odds, it forces another oh! teleport to come through, but who better than Sean to be holding this one down? Now able to back away towards the market. Hayes trying to play aggressive to this one, and now you're running out of time. You had 50 seconds before, now you're down to 20. So TSM's gonna have to get that spike down in a 3v2 situation. Smokes will cover for the plant, and Wardell still stands with the Operator, but they're being pinched from back halls and Octagon. They're stuck inside the center of the site. This is going to be a tough one. Yeah, like you said, two ops. This is going to be so <laughs> tough for them. The close angle from Hayes. He's going to go wide on it now. Wardell just going to get pincered as Gen.G stormed the site and tied things up. If they lose here, I mean, they're going to have some tough decisions to make of how they want to spin going forward. Oh! My goodness, the Guardians for TSM somehow find the heads of Gen G. It's two rounds that we've seen it, but that was very quick. Okay. So we can go back to our deep ways. For TSM, though, mm -hmm. they've since upgraded from a Guardian to an Operator in the hands of Sabrosa. Yeah, Cutler going to use that drone to clear out U-Haul position. I think he spotted one either inside the site or heaven. Not sure if it was both, though. And they're going to use the Molly to further ensure that they have control of U-Haul. But the spike gets caught outside the portal. Great job there by Gimon. And now Kusa's going to swing. He finds his man. Luckily, Wardell gets his two kills, avoids the showstopper, and gets the spike over to B-side. But the Sova on Mikhail, it's still here. It's going to find the spike. It's Sabrosa with the op. TSM find themselves again in a situation where you're in a 1v2, a 2v2, whatever it may be, but you have an operator in your hands. And I think across the board, everybody could say that's not necessarily the weapon of choice in situations like this. As he's going to creep on up. He finds that kill. He should be able to put this one down. He has 30 seconds, and he's going to make play towards A. He could fake the teleport towards B. Now it's looking fast towards A here for TSM. There's the Hunter Shuri. Indeed it is. Mikhail shooting it up through short. I think he has found some tags and indeed he actually finds a frag as well. But Wardell and company able to get in here and get the spike planted. There still is some hope for them. They do have the Hunter Shuri as well to stop a defuse if they're able to keep Cutler safe at short. Oh, and no nope. Kusta. Oh, huge and not untouched, but still very, very healthy. As that turn away goes through, Wardell just has no way out. He gets run down, and the round gets closed out. Gen G will defuse, and Gen G once more will find themselves on 11, but they have to close it out here, Dust. Yeah, they do. To send that one right back from whence it came. And I don't know, things are looking to get spicy. Over towards Long, Sean Throob is able to find that kill, and TSM, their push has been stunted. Yeah, it's not looking good, is it? Wynn has held on to who can control this entire time, and the entries have not been forthcoming for TSM, but Trone finally collects a couple. But now Gamon on the flank through the portal collects his, and now they have an even retake. Both teams have a player on low health, but now the neural theft will be cashed in for Genji for that extra bit of information as they try to work this out. And Drone went huge. It wasn't to run it back. Instead, it was the actual Phoenix going through, picking up two kills, and that one to open up the site. Everybody else corralled towards Hookah after the teleport. Now Wardell going to go wide on that shot there. TSM looking to tie it up. Wynn goes on top of the box. They're trading them back and forth, and it's all up to Quinn on low HP. But a 4K for Drone will tie us up at 11. That is just going to look to grab another, but a nice shock dart to pause things for a moment. There's the orbital strike. Drone just going to hop on out, but it's Hayes to find the kill. Drone will be sat down. Win with the operator looking for it again. He's over oh, towards Octagon, man. and it's all falling apart. Gen.G down to the final two, but it's a 2v2 because Sean is still alive. He's got full utility here, Dust. And the showstopper to boot, which he can choose to use here or save it for later. It just depends on the scenario he's presented as the clock dwindles. Cutler sticks the plant. Boombot comes out to start clearing elbow. It gives Sean the space to pop the showstopper. He's been found out, though, by the recon, forced to pocket it and back away and play off of Kusta. They'll try to work in together. One enemy his spike planted. Kusta can find that first kill. It's up to color. He's pulling out his gun, and Kusta sits him down. Gen G. Allowed them to hold a pretty stout defense in place at B, and while the majority of it got busted, they held on to a couple of key anchor points to set up the retake with Sean and Kusta. The spike was there, but now creeping away. Aggression coming on through. Whoa. Game. 
punished for the teleporter, and Sean is here as well, now completely stuck. A site not oh, open. No. Kusta still here, but this is looking bad for Genji. Yeah, that is a tough one. They were able to get Hoenn out of Hookah, and they were able to still deny TSM Hookah control. Ooh. They still don't have it. The but Genji forces the They're portal, out of the and Hoenn together. gets out. Wow. I don't know how Hoenn got away with that, but that's exactly what Genji needed to get back in this round. Sean's still trapped in portal, though. That's still kind of a problem for Genji, but the load has been lightened by Hoenn making that play. It was such a risky one, but it's paid off. Will it go all the way through, though? The dance around left. the smoke there. Sabrosa didn't spot him to his right. Quinn didn't spot Sabrosa to his left. It was awkward all the way around, which is a good way to sum up this series. But now, Quinn still mounted inside. Drops the spike. Throwing going to get one back from Mikhail Trains. It's there running out of time. TSM have to pick up the spike, get it down, and it's all up to Kusta. A 1v2 as the spike goes down, the run it back available, and the teleporter was taken. They know exactly where he's at. He's able to send it back from whence it came. Can Kusta be the legend here that Genji need to send TSM home, or will we find ourselves in an overtime? He's got to go. He's working against the clock. The flash has come through. He leaps on out. He tries to on towards elbow. He's able to find drone. He just needs no to way. Elbow. He's able to do it on the haze. And Kusta will get the defuse. Genji will send TSM home.